Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome in. This is FST Fantasy Sports Today. My name's Matt Stryker. His name is Joe Pisapia, and this is the place if you want to dominate. Really quickly, at SportsGrid and at SportsGrid TV, those are our social media handles. Just do a double check, make sure you're following, because, folks, we have the author of the Fantasy Black Book here in our clutches. We're going to be talking football. You don't want to miss it. It'll live forever on your social media. Joe, my man, the black book is just flying off shelves. People are really dialing in drafts, best balls, all kinds of things going on. It's football season, and I'm a baseball guy, so you know it kind of pains me to say that. But my man, you right now are in all your glory. What's up? Yeah, I am. It's football season. Go out there, get your fantasy football black book 2024 over on Amazon. It's right behind my beautiful bald head right there. Incredible contributors, Derek Brown, Andrew Erickson, all the guys from Fantasy Pros with me. Dynasty content, 30 pages of just dynasty content. Wow. League-specific draft strategies, how to win your Superflex in 2024, how to win your standard, your PPR leagues, all the different formats. We break it down. And unlike those other you know guys that are sitting out there on the shelves for months and months, right? You know, this one just got updated two weeks ago by me. So, and it's going to get updated again in August. Uh, and the cheat sheets get updated too. If you subscribe to the cheat sheets. So every few weeks I do a refresh of those. So you have the, you know, you have the best chance the to go best information. be successful in your league, you know, I, and that's the thing, you know, like these other books, they come out there in May or June, you know, they get published out there and it's a joke because things change. Training camp changes things. Uh, coaches words matter at certain times in terms of how we're going to look and project certain things. So get out there, use relative position value, use ecosystem, use those tools to uh, go out there and address your fantasy football leagues. And I guarantee you, you'll have success. And, uh, you know, go, uh, again, I'm, I'm obviously, you know, a bias, but you I don't think there's any more. It works, Joe. I, 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 I mean, don't I think there's a more comprehensive. Here. <laughs> well, but here's the thing. I don't think there's a more comprehensive guide out there in terms okay. of how to actually apply. Everything else is about opinion. Opinion's great. We've got a lot of really informed opinion, but we've got actual strategies actual things out there, laying it out there to help you. It's, it's not enough to say, oh, Jamar Chase is really good at football. Yeah, we know that. Mm -hmm. But what's the context? How do you separate him from Jefferson this year and, and understanding right. why and how? So all that is in there. Go check it out on Amazon right now, too. Uh, also, NFL headlines, Matt, C.D. Lamb. He's pretty good at football, but he is waiting for a contract. That's right. He is not going to show up until he gets paid. And after last yeah. year, I think they should pay that man. Uh, C.D. Lamb was pretty, pretty good. If you had C.D. Lamb and you lost your fantasy league, uh, I don't know what to tell you last year. It was pretty bad. Uh, Browns put Nick Chubb on the active pup list. Now that's something everybody expected. So no change there, but we still don't have a real definitive timeline of what Nick Chubb's return is, when it's going to be, how it's going to look. You have Dante Foreman in this backfield. You have Jerome Ford returning to this backfield. So it's a very, very messy situation in Cleveland. More on the Cleveland Browns and what a mess they are. It's a lot of Brown. You know, they basically <laughs> they're talking about a mess. That's how I feel about Cleveland this year. So we'll get to that more in hour two here of the show. Also, Brandon Ayuk not practicing. Again, everybody wants to get paid. That's why you haven't seen Matt Stryker for the last two weeks. He was holding out. We just never. signed Matt to a I new would deal. Never do it. Now he's back. <laughs> he's back. the most petulant thing in the world. I'm sorry if you're under a contract, hold you're out. being paid. You are obligated to be there. You do not hold out for to renegotiate a new contract. It's not how it's done. It's not what I was taught to do. And that's just my rant. I'm off my soapbox. Go. Well, here's a question for you. How else are they supposed to get raises when they outperform you, you, their that's why you have team contract? That's why you give your agent 15 to 20 percent. Why is why is all the money in baseball guaranteed, but all the money in NFL, which makes billions of dollars, not that. guaranteed? It's about holding out. Uh, and I find it to be a very petulant act, and I think it sends the wrong message, to, to, especially to youth athletes. Not me. I'm for the workers. <laughs> the mix. Here we go, folks. I, here we go. Uh, I, I'm for the workers on this one. Uh, football's a rough game. Any given time, your career's over, you get paid. And you're not getting guaranteed money like in basketball where these guys, like, they have a cough and they don't play. Or they, well, I'm only going to play, 20, only gonna play 22 minutes construct. tonight. Uh, no, three I can play 27 years, minutes. Nine million dollars, three million a year. In the second year, oh, unless we've negotiated oh. this legally, you scored, uh, you know, this much. Da, da, da. 
there's nothing that says we're going to renegotiate. Here's the parameters of the deal that you agreed to and you signed. Three years, nine million, three million a year. I don't care how great your second year was, how bad your first or third years. We can have the conversation where we legally place it in the language of the document to renegotiate. Holding out is pretty much holding someone up. And again, ethics, I know you'll oh, sing me a song, play me a violin. Ethically, and just it's just the wrong thing to do, Joe. I'm always on the side of the players. Uh, again, get paid. Football's tough. I'm not careers end sides. short. It's just about how no, you but the problem yourself. is the structure. There's no other way for these guys to make their coin. And speaking of making coin, Jordan Love made his coin. Jordan Love got paid. Uh, that's right. So Jordan Love performed, and he said, "Hey, I'm a quarterback. Everybody loves to pay the quarterback. We're not going to let the quarterback hold out. No, no, no. That's not going to happen." So Jordan Love gets paid a signing bonus of 75 million. I think he'll be okay. 155 in new full guarantees. I think Jordan Love will be okay. Jordan Love last year, Matt, was spectacular down the stretch. Did not turn the ball over hardly at all. Mm -hmm. People were saying years ago when they made this draft, like, what are they doing? Why are they taking Jordan right. Love? Well, guess what? That. They made the right decision. They moved on from Aaron Rodgers. It was a team in the playoffs last year with a quarterback, and it was not Aaron Rodgers. It wasn't the Jets. It was the Green Bay Packers were in the playoffs. Green Bay Packers should have gone to the Super Bowl. Green Bay Packers had the 49ers on the ropes in San Francisco, but they couldn't shut the door, unfortunately. It's part of the learning process for the youngest team in the NFL, and that's what the Packers were last year. So look for the Packers this year with Jordan Love to really come on quickly, especially with Minnesota in a rebuild and Chicago retooling. Uh, I mean, I know that the Lions are my favorite team, but I think the Packers are one of these teams that are going to really challenge this year. I, paying Jordan Love was the right thing to do. And now he's got to put a full season up of those half season numbers. Do you agree that you just got to pay the quarterback at the end of the day, Matt, because it's a quarterback league? Yeah, no, I, I do agree that players need to be paid. Yes. But the point that we were talking about is that you don't renegotiate strike, strike, street. strike. Now I'm leaving the next said, segment until Matt gets me into my demands. No, because we're doing team previews. I'm staying right here, pen and paper, right next to me. I'm still a writing things down kind of guy. When we do the team previews, which is coming up next, I'm here for it. But to this point, though, I think it does take away any distractions, right? That's another thing, too. We started with a distraction in this camp in Dallas, a distraction in this camp in San, in San Francisco. But Green Bay has no distraction now. Everyone knows where everyone is supposed to be. Everyone knows what they're going to get. And now they can go ahead and focus. And I'm with you. And I think that the team knows it. And a lot of wagerers out there know it as well. The Packers are a very sneaky team in the postseason, right? And we wager differently during the first six weeks than we do in the second six weeks into the third six weeks. And how about that? We now have three... 18, right? Okay, but the point is that having Love get that paycheck is going to settle things down and the Packers can focus on to business, Joe. Look, Packers are a team I'm investing in this year. <clears throat> uh, love Christian Watson. Late Dontavian Wicks is really interesting to me too if you don't get Watson too, just to kind of hedge your bets a little bit. But Jordan Love really had the coming out party last year and he looked spectacular. And I love him as a late QB in single QB draft. So you can sure. wait. And get guys like Jordan Love, Dak Prescott, all those guys are going to be out there if you don't want to pay for an early quarterback. And so far, I've got a lot of shares of Jordan Love because, frankly, he's basically free out there. At the end of the day, it's like him and Purdy, you know, Jared Goff, Kirk Cousins. Uh, guess what? Cousins has been a QB one the last three years until his injury. Jared Goff was a QB one the last two years. Jordan Love was a QB one last year. Dak Prescott was a QB one. All those guys were really good. In fact, Dak Prescott was QB3. We're going to talk more about him and the Dallas Cowboys. It's one of the teams we're previewing in this second hour, too. On top of the Dallas Cowboys, we're also going to talk about the Cincinnati Bengals. We're also going to discuss the Cleveland Brown situation and what to make of the Denver Broncos. But when we come back, we're going to kick things off here with Joe Burrow. He's got a new hairstyle. It's getting closer and closer to mine. That's why I like it. Uh, but <laughs> we're looking for the Bengals to bounce back in a big way and alliteration aside why this might be the year for the Cincinnati Bengals. We'll tell you who could challenge the Chiefs and why the team in Cincinnati might be that. So don't go anywhere. We're going to break these teams down with a fantasy eye when we return on FST.
Are there any grave issues that would keep Team USA from winning a gold medal? Should they be minus 430 against the field or whatever the price is right now? Maybe. But am I looking at, hey, Europe as a continent to win the Olympics at plus 500 as an interesting bet? Yeah, because one, they have five teams in the Olympics out of the 12. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Yankees are desperate. I mean, they could fire hitting coaches and everything else, but it's, it's not working. So I don't know if uh, Cashman really would, would do that. They, they seem to be so, you know, tight-knit, but something's got to happen. A big award or a big prize in the trade deadline sweep things would be Vladimir Guerrero Jr., right? Vladdy, put, put him in the middle of a lineup. In-game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Media have already said uh, that they are going to be horrible. The books have them, as we'll see in a moment, at a win total of five and a half. Sean Payton, though, Scotty, he does not listen to preseason prognosticators. And that's your future, and it's on you. Like, they selected him. They wanted him. That's what they got. And now he has to build that from scratch. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. If this wind like we have out of the Northwest was here all week, uh, was here, it would be insane watching these guys play in it. But it's going to be a Southwest wind, which makes it a little easier uh, as far as the direction of the wind. The guys um, will have it a little bit of a break on the back nine. But it is such a fun golf course, one that I really do think tests every single aspect of your game. Only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back into FST Fantasy Sports Today. Matt Stryker and Joe Pizzapia with you here. It's time for NFL Team Previews. We've been doing it now for the past few weeks, moving in alphabetical order, and now we find ourselves in Cincinnati. Baby, if you ever wondered. All right, so we know the usual players, the usual suspects here, but there are some new names, and there are some new ways to invest in this Bengals ball club. So, Joseph, the floor is yours. What what happened to you? You listened to the eighties on eight, like going into today's show this morning. No, I, I you are. The 80s. I understand that, but like between the Carson stuff in hour two, I mean the WKRP uh, people are running to Google to figure out what Matt Stryker is saying. <laughs> the kids love syndicated sitcoms; they can't get enough of them. Uh, the kids also love Joe Burrow and his new hair. So there you go. <laughs> Joe Burrow walked in with the slim shady look for the Cody Rhodes, and you know what? <clears throat> I think it's a little more Cody Rhodes. I think it's time for Joe Burrow to finish his story. He got real close to a Super Bowl, one play away from winning it. And I think with a good offensive line, you're going to see the Bengals challenge the Kansas City Chiefs this year. I'm looking around for challengers to the Chiefs. And the only team that stands out is the guy that's got the guts to challenge Joe Burrow and has proved that he can beat Patrick Mahomes. And he's done it numerous times already. So Joe Burrow is that dude. There's no stage too big. He's got ice water in the veins. And this is a team that Jamar Chase, you know, they were trying to get him to say Patrick Mahomes' name, and he wouldn't say it. He's like, yeah, he's the best, or, but I think Joe Burrow is, is the best, or, you know, he's the number one guy in the league, but Joe Burrow is my guy. That is loyalty. That is focus. That's what I want to see out of the Bengals. That and Joe Burrow upright. So offensive line, sure. pretty pleased. Can we get that? Can we please? Uh, notes here, too. In the running back scenario, a lot of positive buzz about Chase Brown. Now, Zach Moss is still going ahead of him in ADP. Not too much. That gap continues to close. Zach Moss coming off a great year last year in Shane Steichen's Colts offense. A lot of question marks. Well, is he the lead guy or is Chase Brown the lead guy? If you're betting on talent, then bet on the ADP of Chase Brown. If you're trying to just kind of be boring and look for the guy maybe in the early downs, perhaps it's Zach Moss. But this is going to be a fluid RB situation. Right now, I'm kind of staying away from it. I want to see who's getting those first team reps. I want to see in training camp, in those preseason games who looks better because visually if chase brown gets better there's a world where chase brown overtakes him on that depth chart and because the guy you want in fantasy and that could very well happen sooner than later look jamar chase superstar t higgins 
has been a great 1A. He's a fringe wide receiver one who's being drafted as a low end two. It's crazy right now. More on him later. Jermaine Burton, the rookie coming in here, has a lot of talent, a lot of issues and question marks too. And Mike Kosicki, again, the tight end, not a huge thing in this Bengals offense. Usually a couple of games maybe they're good for, but I wouldn't be holding the torch for him. But Burton's very interesting, especially if there's an injury to Chase or T. Higgins. But overall, to me, this is a team that really can challenge for that AFC crown. And Jamar Chase is a top five overall pick yet once again. His... The only thing that's really stopping Jamar Chase from being just this juggernaut wide receiver is health, his health right. and Joe Burrow's health. If we can get them both on the same page for a full 17 game season, then Jamar Chase is going to finish or even challenge for that wide receiver one overall spot. And I don't, you know, it's not a hot take. It's not moving mountains to say that, but he hasn't done it yet. And we've seen the Lambs go past him. We've seen Justin Jefferson go past him. Heck, we've seen Amon Ross and Brown go past him and Tyreek Hill. So I am going to go out on that ledge and say that Jamar Chase is going to be at the very top of that, if not one number two this year. Joe Burrow stays healthy. And that, my friends, is going to be a huge win. I would take Chase over Jefferson this year just simply based on quarterback play. Sam Darnold, I don't know if I want to believe in Sam Darnold in Minnesota. Mm. J.J. McCarthy is going to be a work in progress. So no matter how great jj is and he is i think jamar chase might be the better investment in 2024 of the two all right great job by you now let's transition everybody knows that cleveland rocks so let's go to the cleveland Browns. see it went out of the 80s the drew cowry show was in like what the 2000s or something the 90s uh, the 90s okay but that's where the last are going to stop for you (laughs) when it comes to the cleveland browns right you're you're 100 out on this team as far as i understand share your vitriol for the browns yeah well, look, uh, Cleveland can kick rocks with this team in right. fantasy. That, that's how I feel about it. So there you go. There's your dad joke of the day. I don't know what we're going to get out of Deshaun Watson. And the truth is nobody knows. Nobody knows what to think about Deshaun Watson at this point. Perhaps he's just never going to get back. I thought last year was the buy-in year. It's like, okay, in Superflex Leagues, let's buy back in. Let's see if we get the bounce back, full season of practice, yada, yada, regular offseason. None of that happened. So is it Watson who's the starter? Are they going to have a long leash? Is he going to go to Winston? Is it going to Huntley, who is also in this quarterback room? Who's going to play the most games? I don't know. And then what does that do to the other pieces here? What does that do to Amari Cooper's ADP, who's been a very steady guy? Sometimes the splits are a little weird with Amari Cooper, but you ride the good and the bad. And then you've also got Jerry Judy brought in, Elijah Moore. I mean, this is a very questionable situation. The running back room is questionable too. We don't know. We talked about Nick Chubb earlier in the last segment. We don't know when he's coming back, how that's going to look. I'm not going to bet against Nick Chubb, but I'm not going to run out and acquire him either because unless it is so cheap, I can't pass. I want healthy guys. It's going to be hard enough with all the injuries that happen. I don't want to start my fantasy team at a deficit. And then there's David Njoku, a guy who's been around for many years. Okay. This is not a rookie. David Njoku has been around the block for quite a while in the world of football okay and he is coming off his best season it was a breakout season there's no doubt about that but that was with joe flacco playing quarterback and when you're seven years into the league and you have a breakout and then that quarterback goes away and now it's going back to deshaun watson who never seems to look for him i have real concerns to me Njoku is one of these guys that's set up for a bigger bust than anybody else in fantasy football this year and it's because of the unknown of the quarterback play the unknown of, was it just Joe Flacco? Was something different there with David and Joku doing different things? I don't know. All I know is the data with Joe Flacco and without Joe Flacco. One of them has a tight end one attached to it, and that's <laughs> Joe Flacco. And the other one has a guy that's not a tight end one attached to it. So I want Gosh. nothing to do with David and Joku. Give me Evan Ingram, George Kittle, Brock Bowers, all those other guys that are going in that same kind of general range as him every single day over in Joku. To me, it makes no sense, man. I agree. Look, if if you're still chasing that, the, the joke you is in the name. The joke is on you if you are there for it. So I'm with you, Joe, 100%. There's other ways you can go. Yeah. Uh, we come back, we're going to take a look at another team with big expectations. The Dallas Cowboys. Every year, the expectations are high and 2024 are no different. But from a fantasy perspective, how can we invest? Well, we'll tell you about some value. Yeah, value when it comes to the cold.
Are there any grave issues that would keep Team USA from winning a gold medal? Should they be minus 430 against the field or whatever the price is right now? Maybe. But am I looking at, hey, Europe as a continent to win the Olympics at plus 500 as an interesting bet? Yeah, because one, they have five teams in the Olympics out of the 12. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Yankees are desperate. I mean, they could fire hitting coaches and everything else, but it's, it's not working. So I don't know if uh, Cashman really would, would do that. They, they seem to be so, you know, tight knit, but something's got to happen. A big award or a big prize in the trade deadline sweep things would be Vladimir Guerrero Jr., right? Vladdy put, put him in the middle of a lineup. In game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Media have already said uh, that they are going to be horrible. The books have them, as we'll see in a moment, as a win total of five and a half. Sean Payton, though, Scotty, he does not listen to preseason prognosticators. And that's your future, and it's on you. Like, they selected him. They wanted him. That's what they got. And now he has to build that from scratch. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. If this wind like we have out of the Northwest was here all week, uh, was here, it would be insane watching these guys play in it. But it's going to be a Southwest wind, which makes it a little easier uh, as far as the direction of the wind. The guys um, will have it a little bit of a break on the back nine. But it is such a fun golf course, one that I really do think tests every single aspect of your game. Only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back into FST Fantasy Sports. Today, we're talking with the author of the Fantasy Black... Actually, let me do my NPR voice. We're speaking with known time traveler and author of the Fantasy Black book, Joe Pizapian. What Joe does is he goes ahead into the future of football season, sees what's going to happen, and then returns to the now and writes the Black book. He is also a co-conspirator behind toxin-releasing patches that people use in the bottom of their feet. We'll get to that in the other segments. All right, Joe, it's time for Team Freebies. I wish I had the hair... Of the ancient aliens guy, I love that guy's hair. I want the I want the oh. big crazy hair, and I'm just out there talking about, <clears throat> yeah, Rico Dowdle could be useful this year in fantasy, guys. I mean, if they could, if the tech team could put that hair on me and do all that, that would be fun. Good conspiracy <laughs> theories. Well, <laughs> with that said, in the Rico Dowdle uh, <clears throat> tease, it's time to explore the Dallas Cowboys, and um, we can get in our time machine and try to see what this team will look like. But right now, CD Lamb isn't even on the field right? Due to the contract situation that you outlined in an earlier segment. Does that change anything at all for you? No, not at all. I have all the confidence in the world that CD Lamb is going to get paid, be there week one. So sure. no matter what it looks like or how long it drags on, the Cowboys literally cannot afford to play without CD Lamb. I think that was pretty clear last year. CD Lamb is this offense. The offense does not work. Defense is very good. The offense is very thin. It's very one-dimensional. And that dimension that you want to live in, ironically, we're talking about dimensions and things moving and time travel. This offense does not travel without C.D. Lamb. So it's going to get done, and they'll figure it out. And C.D. Lamb is still my number one overall guy. And the reason is the offense is C.D. Lamb. So there's no target competition for him, really. Uh, There's some other guys around. They're just guys at this point. But C.D. Lamb's 2023 second half was unbelievable and and it started slow last season started slow for him and that's something that i think a lot of people forget because the end was so good but people were bitching and complaining and moaning about oh when is cd lamb gonna have good games and oh it's a miserable september and then they were miserable in part of october well they weren't miserable in november or december unless they traded cd lamb to somebody else because that guy was off the charts from the middle of october on and cd lamb again is set up to do the same thing again Just feed that guy the football and good things are going to happen for the Cowboys. Now, the rest of this offense is questionable here. You're bringing back Ezekiel Elliott, who I still think has something left in the tank. Can he give you 750 yards rushing and seven or eight touchdowns? Probably. 
And in the standard league, that's going to be a useful low end RB two fodder for sure. Um, Rico Dowdle. <clears throat> Look, there's moments last year that I liked Rico Dowdle and I thought Dowdle deserved more work. How that backfield is going to look, we'll see who they're going to trust at the goal line is more important. That is the thing right. I think you want to take out of preseason with them. Who's the guy working at the goal line? Who's in those formations? Is it Zeke? Probably. If it is, right. yeah. he's the more valuable back no matter how much action Dowdle gets because you want those touchdowns. You want that touchdown equity. So even if Zeke carries the ball 10 times for – I mean, he's 10 times for, you know, 35 yards. If he has a touchdown, he's going to end up with a better day, possibly. Uh, when it comes to the wide receivers, Brandon Cook's still a guy that is useful in deeper leagues, for sure. Jalen Tober's going to be the third guy there. Michael Gallup is retired. Jake Ferguson is a really interesting late tight end because they have to throw to somebody else, and Ferguson has been pretty solid. I see a very copy and paste season for him. But it's Dak Prescott that I think really gets, I think, enough love and respect because – Cowboy fans are obsessed with winning in the playoffs as they should be, but we're talking fantasy here and fantasy QBs. He was QB three in fantasy last year and he's being drafted as, so as late as the eighth, ninth, or even 10th guy off the board in certain drafts. So I don't quite understand that. It's going to be a very pass heavy offense, Matt. I don't see this being a grind it with the running backs kind of situation here for Dallas again, which means 4,500 yards is probably a lock again for Dak Prescott in 2024. So in single quarterback leagues or even super flex, Dak is a really interesting, I think, undervalued asset considering the structure of this roster. Let me ask you, how many wins for the Cowboys this year in your estimation, Joe? Uh, I think they're still a 10-win plus team. Mm -hmm. I do. I think that defense is so good. Uh, I think for them to get to that 12-13 level, it's got to be – Something really left in the tank there for Zeke, just to balance his offense out a little bit and a great season, the healthy one from Micah Parsons and Trayvon Diggs and all those guys. Like they need the defense to stay healthy. Uh, I think the Giants, uh, you know, I think defensively they've improved a little bit. So that's something to watch. I think Washington offensively have yeah. uh, improved a little bit. So I don't think this division is nearly the cakewalk it was last year. So I'm not going to be running out to bet the over or under necessarily on the Cowboys because I think where they're set right now is probably a good one. But that's a great question, Matt. It really is. Because the Cowboys, at the end of the day, are going to go as far as CeeDee Lamb takes them. And that's where they'll be. When we return, we're going to put some respect on some guys that aren't getting enough on their name in fantasy draft. We'll tell you who. When we return. Are there any grave issues that would keep Team USA from winning a gold medal? Should they be minus 430 against the field or whatever the price is right now? Maybe. But am I looking at, hey, Europe as a continent to win the Olympics at plus 500 as an interesting bet? Yeah, because one, they have five teams in the Olympics out of the 12. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Yankees are desperate. I mean, they could fire hitting coaches and everything else, but it's, it's not working. So I don't know if uh, Cashman really would, would do that. They, they seem to be so, you know, tight-knit, but something's got to happen. A big award or a big prize in the trade deadline sweep things would be Vladimir Guerrero Jr., right? Vladdy, put, put him in the middle of the lineup. In-game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Media have already said uh, that they are going to be horrible. The books have them, as we'll see in a moment, at a win total of five and a half. Sean Payton, though, Scotty, he does not listen to preseason prognosticators. And that's your future, and it's on you. Like, they selected him. They wanted him. That's what they got. And now he has to build that from scratch. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. If this wind like we have out of the Northwest was here all week, uh, was here, it would be insane watching these guys play in it. But it's going to be a Southwest wind, which makes it a little easier uh, as far as the direction of the wind. The guys um, will have it a little bit of a break on the back nine. But it is such a fun golf course, one that I really do think tests every single aspect of your game. Only on Sports Grid. Uh, 
All right, welcome back into FST Fantasy Sports today. Matt and Joe giving you everything you need in order to dominate. And of course, quick tip of the cap to everyone behind the glass. We have a great crew here that makes this show go. This entire network is built with sports fans, just like you and I. And it's time to put some respect on the name. Now, Joe, you are the master of all things. So when I saw <laughs> in our show sheet, our shell, respect on his name. I, I thought this was going to be a segment where I just pretty much praise and laud you, but we've done that now yeah. for an hour and a half. So what is this one all yeah. about? Well, this one is guys that are going outside of, you know, the top 40 picks that I, I just don't understand why they're not getting more respect because of the circumstance they're playing in the teams they play for their role in their respective offenses. And I think sometimes people just, <clears throat> they either get bored of players, right? They, they, you know, veterans or guys that have been there before, Guys are coming off injury. People are worried about it. Well, that, that's fair sometimes. But then there's just players where maybe people just don't believe in what they saw last year. And yet the circumstances haven't changed and people still aren't buying into them. And to me, I think that's weird. And I think that's where we start with Rashad White. Because Rashad White is a guy coming off a season where he finishes RB8. He had almost 1,500 all-purpose yards last year. Let that sink in. In PPR leagues... 64 receptions incredibly valuable now he only had nine touchdowns combined so if you add in a few more touchdowns this year which is certainly not outside of the realm of possibility you know touchdowns are one of those things that are very volatile year over year crazy things happen guys get stuff at the goal line some years they don't crazy things happen but this is the back okay it's rashad white and rashad white right now is being drafted as the 14th running back off the board and i don't understand that now, I love Isaiah Pacheco. He's playing in a great spot, but Pacheco hasn't proved that he could be that guy yet for a whole season. He's had some injury issues. You got Josh Jacobs in a new spot with a team that just jettisoned him. And I know I like the Green Bay Packers, but is he going to be better than Rashad White necessarily, especially in PPR leagues, especially with Marshawn Lloyd, who was drafted there? There's some questions there about the competition in that Green Bay backfield for me. So I'm looking at Rashad White as the perfect guy that if you are an early wide receiver build, let's say you start with three straight wide receivers, or if you go wide receiver, tight end, wide receiver, wide receiver, like you just keep pounding the table there, wide receiver, right? In the fourth round, Rashad White's going to be floating around, and Rashad White is perfectly fine. Now, I love him as my RB2. I've drafted him a lot that way because I like to go hero RB, and then sometimes he even slips as late as the fifth round. I've seen it happen in drafts. It should not happen, but it does. But White is one of these guys where I look at the situation. I know Dave Canales is gone, and he was the guy that kind of unlocked Baker Mayfield and set this offense up for success last year. But I think you take that path and you continue to progress from it. And I don't think Mayfield's going to be all of a sudden back to regression candidate. I think there was a lot to learn last year of what he does well and what he doesn't. I think they stick to that. And Rashad White, I think, can only get better. So for me, Rashad White is being undervalued in the marketplace and I think has a real, uh, I think, good return on investment the way he's currently set up in ADP. And I love what you're doing here, and it kind of goes hand in hand with what the Black Book does is constantly updating is you're, you're speaking fluidly now to someone that may be drafting this season and trying to go, like you said, wide receivers early on. And now you're speaking directly to that person that says, well, what do I do <clears throat> when I need the running back? So, so I like the conversation that we're having here. Let's flip it around now. Let's talk about a wide receiver that maybe people could look for that can give them some value should they maybe go running back heavy early on. Well, Matt, if I told you you could have a wide receiver that had four straight years of 1,000 yards receiving, would you be interested in that guy who is still in his prime? I would. Would you figure he would be a wide receiver two or maybe even a low-end wide receiver one? It should be. All right. Well, this guy is being drafted as wide receiver 32 right now, and his name is Terry McLaurin. And Terry <laughs> McLaurin has played with some awful quarterbacks in his career. And I mean awful, okay? He's played with almost a dozen of them over his tenure in the NFL. And that is hard for a wide receiver to find uh, their rapport with a quarterback, the timing, all those issues that come into play that are really important between quarterback and wide receiver. He's got a new one now. And this new one is by <laughs> far the most talented one he's ever had to play with. And now he's got Jaden Daniels. And sure, there's a rookie learning curve and we could talk about that. But Jaden Daniels has the upside to make Terry McLaurin an absolute bona fide superstar. And yet here we are where his, his ADP is so low. His consistency is so good. And the problem is, well, people don't get excited about Terry McLaurin. Why? Because, well, you know, five touchdowns every year. Do we really think he can't improve that number to eight or nine or even 10 potentially this year? No one's challenging him for that number one job. Jahan Dotson is not taking over as number one wide receiver for the commanders. It's Terry McLaurin and everybody else. 
and now you got Jaden Daniels, and I can't tell you what a value. So the inverse is true here. If you are starting, let's say, with a Brees Hall or a Bijan Robinson, or you go early hero running back somewhere else, and you try to make up ground at wide receiver, Terry McLaurin is one of those guys. He's being drafted as a three. He's going to play at minimum as a two, and he's got the upside to finish as a high end two, maybe even scratch a surface if everything breaks right. I don't want to put too much into it right away and project too heartily for Jaden Daniels, but I will say this. It's such an extreme value right now in Terry McLaurin. I have every share you could possibly imagine in every draft and every mock that I've done so far. And I can't tell you like how much of a value this guy can be. And he's in his prime and he's consistent already. The floor is so good that even if he just returns his floor, it's a good investment. But I think the ceiling is much higher in 2024. Quick answer over under nine and a half wins for the commanders. Uh, again, tough division, right? You got to play the Eagles twice, the Cowboys twice. <clears throat> I think that's going to be tricky. I'm going to say under, but I do think they're going to be very competitive. And I think Dan Quinn is a good football coach. And when you give good football coaches that second time as a head coach, they typically tend to get it. If you look around like that tends to be the secret sauce. And I do think Dan Quinn is a good football guy. Yeah, I was going to set it at eight and a half, but I just figured, okay, yeah. so let's go now talking about another wide receiver. And again, it's just a name that. You, we've talked about this. I mean, is this either just you've seen this name so much? Is it just that this name is just too consistent? Is it just that this name is not the big name on the team? Talk to me about T. Higgins. Why T. Higgins is going at wide receiver 27 in drafts, uh, I don't know. Uh, he finished as wide receiver 17 in 2022 when he was healthy. 17. What, what am I missing here? He wasn't healthy last year. Joe Burrow wasn't healthy last year, so he had a bad year. Okay, so what? Crumple 2023 and throw it out the window. Because T. Higgins is an extraordinary talent. This offense isn't going to change. It's still throwing the football over to plays. It's still Jamar Chase being the rock star. But T. Higgins, you know, is the slash to his Axel Rose or however we want to put it. I don't care. What I'm saying, Keith Richards <laughs> is Mick Jagger for Matt, so he understands. Like, because I know I got to go a little references. But, like, he's that guy. He's right there with him, right? So, T. Higgins, I know there were issues like, well, are we gonna, is he going to come back? Is he happy with the contract? Look. Everyone's just going to fall in the line and play here because they have a real opportunity. And I think it's smart for the Bengals to hang on to T Higgins. He's not going anywhere. Trade rumors aside. Now you put your head down, you do the work. And I think you're getting a great value. Just like Terry McLaurin. This is another guy too. Early RBs are your thing. You want to get that big hero RB make up granite wide receiver, Jalen Waddle, Terry McLaurin, T Higgins. These are the names you have to be targeting in drafts. All right, let's move on to a quarterback. Now I'm talking about rain Dakota Prescott. Most people know him as Dak. Prescott. Talk to me about why Dak Prescott is on this list. I just think he's being undervalued. Uh, coming off a year where he was QB3. QB3. Look at that. 36 touchdowns last year. Just nine interceptions. You know, Dak had historically been a guy that didn't throw a lot of picks, always protected the football. And he got back to that in a big way in 2023. They really just let Dak go out there and cook and throw the football around. And he was one of the leaders in attempts at 590. Uh, he had a great season last year for fantasy. And no, he's not a big rusher, but he can get out there and, you know, get you some points with his legs too on occasion. But it, to me, it comes back down to what's the identity of the Cowboys? They're a throw first team, right? So in single quarterback leagues, you're looking at Dak Prescott, you're looking at Jordan Love, you're looking at Jared Goff. Like all these guys finished as QB1s last year, and they're all barely being drafted as QB1s, and I just don't understand that. So to me, this is something we've got to really figure out here and realize there's value. Now in Superflex, again, Different set of circumstances. I think the ADP is appropriate there, but I think you're not missing ground. So if you decide not to go quarterback in the first round and the second round, you end up with Dak Prescott as your QB one. There's worse things. There's just worse things. So this is a perfect set of circumstances where the anger or frustration with the fan base kind of leaks into fantasy. Don't let that happen. Dak Prescott right. from a fantasy perspective is still a very solid investment. We return. We're going to continue our NFL talk right here. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this. Are there any grave issues that would keep Team USA from winning a gold medal? Should they be minus 430 against the field or whatever the price is right now? Maybe. But am I looking at, hey, 
Europe as a continent to win the Olympics at plus 500 as an interesting bet. Yeah, because one, they have five teams in the Olympics out of the 12. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Yankees are desperate. I mean, they could fire hitting coaches and everything else, but it's, it's not working. So I don't know if uh, Cashman really would, would do that. They, they seem to be so, you know, tight knit, but something's got to happen. A big award or a big prize in the trade deadline sweepstakes would be Vladimir Guerrero Jr., right? Vladdy, put, put him in the middle of a lineup. In game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Media have already said uh, that they are going to be horrible. The books have them, as we'll see in a moment, at a win total of five and a half. Sean Payton, though, Scotty, he does not listen to preseason prognosticators. And that's your future, and it's on you. Like, they selected him. They wanted him. That's what they got. And now he has to build that from scratch. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. If this wind like we have out of the Northwest was here all week, uh, was here, it would be insane watching these guys play in it. But it's going to be a Southwest wind, which makes it a little easier uh, as far as the direction of the wind. The guys um, will have it a little bit of a break on the back nine. But it is such a fun golf course, one that I really do think tests every single aspect of your game. Only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back into FST Fantasy Sports Today. Matt Stryker and Joe Pizzapia continuing our deep dive into the upcoming NFL season. Of course, stay tuned once we're done more quality, informative, educational, entertaining programming ahead. But now it's time to get Rocky Mountain High, my favorite part of the show. We are going to Denver to preview the Denver Broncos. Now, folks, I uh, just want to pull back the curtain here. This is known as our short segment, and there's a reason because, uh, well, I don't know how much there is to love in Denver, Joe. <laughs> no, not a lot to love in Denver, that's for sure. Uh, a lot of uncertainty. I just can't shake the Bo Nix of Auburn out of my head. I know, you know, finished up well in Oregon, very successful team. Giant bunch of men protecting him in that offensive line, giving him time <laughs> to throw, but still – the lowest average depth of target of any quarterback in this class, right? By a wide margin. Uh, sure, it's part of the offense, but it's also, I think, limiting, you know, the warts or potential downsides of Bo Nix. And then if you're going to go and take Bo Nix as aggressively as the Denver Broncos took him, and they did take him aggressively in air quotes there, I just mm -hmm. don't know, you know, if he's, he's got to be the starter to start the year. I just don't think there's any way around this. So, what does that do for a quarterback that I'm not super high on to be a day one, week one starter at the NFL level? There's some problems potentially. And behind him is Zach Wilson and Jared Stidham. It's not exactly confidence after that. So this becomes an interesting scenario of can you find any value here? Javante Williams is being challenged for that number one role. A lot of people love Jaleel McLaughlin. He's a very popular sleeper this year in the fantasy football community because people think McLaughlin could be that guy that would really – um, you know, had a great college career, a lot of volume, could be that kind of guy. Maybe they have to just rely heavily on the run. That's possible. A lot of people have a lot of faith on Sean Payton. Now I do, but only to a certain extent. Uh, this is not Drew Brees you're working with here. This is Bo Nix. This is a totally different set of circumstances. So uh, I am skeptical at best about the Broncos. McLaughlin's interesting. Cortland Sutton's interesting because I still think he's the alpha dog wide receiver one in this group. He's coming at a significant discount. And if you look at the projections on him, he's going as somewhere like a wide receiver five or even six in some locations. That's fine. Like, I think that's okay. Bad team might be playing from behind. Take that, you know, wide receiver one on that team. I'm okay. Marvin Mims has size and he has got some intrigue there, but I just don't know if we can, you know, get there. I had a lot of injuries last year with that wide receiver core. Dulcich is a, is a nice talented tight end. Rookie quarterbacks tend to check down a lot, look for those tight ends. So he could be useful at times, but I think more of a tight end streamer with the way tight end value and talent is this year. 
So to me, the one guy in this offense you can make a case for is Cortland Sutton as ADP. Okay. Troy Franklin in deeper leagues, interesting because he did play with Bo Nix. So there's a familiarity there. And I think mm-hmm. that does matter to a certain extent. I do think that when you have a young quarterback and a receiver that he has a relationship with already, it's going to be something that's comfortable for them. But at the same time, this is professional football. So there's going to be guys that are going to outrank him for targets and Cortland Sutton's going to outrank him. So late Troy Franklin, intriguing. Jaleel McLaughlin, late, intriguing. Cortland Sutton is a value play. There's a couple pieces you can cherry pick. But overall, not super excited about the offense of the Denver Broncos. All right, Joe, great job as always. Appropriate amount of time spent on the Broncos. And it leaves us now room to talk. The Detroit Lions. You and I are both very high on this team. I'm going to turn you loose, my friend. What's up? Yeah, I want to see how the Lions responded to being favorites last year, right? They've always been the plucky underdog the last couple of years. And now all of a sudden last year, they had to play with expectations. And what did that mean? Well, they went out and they met that in week one by beating the Chiefs. And they showed you they were ready for it. Unfortunately, Dan Campbell wasn't ready for the big stage and made some terrible decisions in a playoff game that they should have won in San Francisco, but they did not. And I know I should let that go, but financially I was invested in the Lions and I can't let it go. I just can't let it go because it was right there. But I digress. Dan Campbell is in a great situation this year, and so are the Lions from a fantasy perspective. Jared Goff, incredibly steady. He's only got three games where he's going to be outside playing this year. That's amazing for Jared Goff. Jameer Gibbs, last year, you know, everyone keeps talking about worrying about David Montgomery. I must be the only person on the planet not worry about David Montgomery because Jameer Gibbs, to me, he is my fourth running back off my board. You could argue fifth too but i'm looking at the age i'm looking at his role in the offense i'm looking at what he did last year and let's keep in mind he did nothing for the first six weeks of the season last year nothing and he still finished as rb10 last year he had 10 rushing touchdowns so all this well he's not going to get as many rushing touchdowns because david montgomery well he had 10 last year and he was irrelevant (laughs) for six games so i think the possibility of repeating that is there this is a really good offense he caught 52 balls last year so he is the next Alvin Kamara, right? Like that's the way you want to put wow. it. He is that kind of guy. Well so we know what Alvin Kamara did in his peak. And that's basically what Jameer Gibbs is going to be. And just like Alvin Kamara, right? He had uh, Mark Ingram with him, right? Well, David Montgomery's kind of mm-hmm. like that Mark Ingram. The guy that's going to get some mop up work. The guy that's going to, you know, help keep Jameer Gibbs healthy and on the field. But I love Gibbs. I also love Laporta too. Uh, Laporta last year, a breakout season as a rookie. The tight end class is so good this year compared to last year. Uh, You're talking about stars, Trey McBride, Laporta, Kincaid, Kyle Pitts on the precipice. Last year, nobody wanted to even look at tight end. This year, it's like, how can I get as many of these guys and play with Flexi? (laughs) That's how good they're going to be. And Laporta, on many boards, is number one. I still put Kelsey one. I still will put that track record against anybody. Amon Ross St. Brown still set up to be, again, if you're drafting in the middle, Amon Ross St. Brown is going to be there anywhere from four to eight. And he is my target pick. He is my number one dude there. That's the guy that I want in the middle of drafts. So consistent, so good every single week. The targets are there, the production's there. And if Jameson Williams can actually deliver and get himself together and a lot of positive buzz so far on Jameson Williams and be that guy that takes the top off the defense, the big play guy, like he was in Alabama. Well, guess what? The Lions are going to be even better offensively as long as health cooperate so i am very bullish on the lions i love to invest in the lions offense not so much montgomery as much as the other guys i kind of highlighted there but gibbs specifically at the turn he's basically sitting out there matt and every time i'm at the turn i'm taking jameer gibbs all right with the time that we have remaining quickly um give me an over under on a lion's win total and then i know you believe the lions to represent the nfc in the super bowl against whom would they play representing the afc Uh, I still say it's Chiefs, and I think it's Lions. I think the Chiefs are on a mission this year to be that 3P team because no one's ever done it, and I think that's a huge feather in their cap, and they know it, and they want it, and they were talking about it right after. The Lions are going to be formidable. I think another step in that ladder for them. But when we come back, I'm going to talk about some players that are dead to me. Who is it? I can't tell you. Are there any grave issues that would keep Team USA from winning a gold medal? Should they be minus 430 against the field or whatever the price is right now? Maybe. 
but am I looking at, hey, Europe as a continent to win the Olympics at plus 500 as an interesting bet? Yeah, because one, they have five teams in the Olympics out of the 12. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Yankees are desperate. I mean, they could fire hitting coaches and everything else, but it's, it's not working. So I don't know if uh, Cashman really would, would do that. They, they seem to be so, you know, tight knit, but something's got to happen. A big award or a big prize in the trade deadline sweepstakes would be Vladimir Guerrero Jr., right? Vladdy, put, put him in the middle of a lineup. In game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. Media have already said uh, that they are going to be horrible. The books have them, as we'll see in a moment, at a win total of five and a half. Sean Payton, though, Scotty, he does not listen to preseason prognosticators. That's your future, and it's on you. Like, they selected him. They wanted him. That's what they got. And now he has to build that from scratch. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. If this wind like we have out of the Northwest was here all week, uh, was here, it would be insane watching these guys play in it. But it's going to be a Southwest wind, which makes it a little easier uh, as far as the direction of the wind. The guys um, will have it a little bit of a break on the back nine. But it is such a fun golf course, one that I really do think tests every single aspect of your game. Only on Sports Grid. Oh, welcome back into FST Fantasy Sports Today. My name's Matt Stracker. His name's Joe Pizzapia. And folks, we just have such a great time here on the show. We would not be able to have it without you. So on behalf of myself, Joe, this entire crew, thank you all so much for allowing us to do what we love. It is now time for a segment that I won't speak its name because I don't want to tempt fate, but it's basically players that Joe wants no part of. And I'll let Joe take it from here, Joseph. Yeah, well, first of all, we talk about the ecosystem, right? I talk about the fantasy black book all the time is, you know, targeting players on offenses where you know what their roles are, you know how to gauge their value, and you know whether they're going to be productive or not, in theory, with help. Jerry Judy, to me, doesn't tick any of these boxes. Jerry Judy last year caught just 54 balls out of 87 targets. Now, we can talk about the quarterback play of Russell Wilson at times. Okay, fine. But he only had two touchdowns last year. Uh, Jerry Judy finishes wide receiver 50. Uh, last season before that wide receiver 21 but before that wide receiver 89 and he has been a guy that has missed some time here and there too but i'm not going to hang that on him football's a tough game what i'm going to hang on him is the offense and it's a mess of the cleveland browns i have no idea how it's going to operate at what level it's going to operate and i'm not saying that you have to invest a lot in him but what happens is you're looking at a guy like jerry judy going in the same rounds as guys right now like tyler lockett or Cortland Sutton, or I kind of know what Cortland Sutton's role is going to be. Brian Thomas Jr., interesting guy. Uh, even, you know, sometimes people reach for Jerry Judy closer to where Lad McConkey's going. Guys with upside, guys with opportunity. And Jerry Judy is a guy you're going to take over them. I don't get that. I don't understand it at all. And just because he's a well-known name that has a pedigree, at this stage in his career, once a team jettisons you, they kind of tell you what, you know, everybody should know already about you, which is, you know, you're not an asset that we value. And I can't value an asset on a team that I just don't understand where it's going. And speaking of that, and the Cleveland Browns, Deshaun Watson is another big reason for that. I don't know if Deshaun Watson is going to be the starter. If you ask me who's going to play the most games at quarterback for the Bears, this, excuse me, for the Browns this year, I think it would be Winston. If I really, if you held me to it, uh, because of the health of Watson, because of the performance of Watson, and we can make excuses all we want. But I think the time has come where we no longer make excuses for Deshaun Watson. I think that is done. And I think that chasing a couple years ago of the pinnacle of what Deshaun Watson was should be left by the wayside. It is done. It is over. If he has a good season, let it happen on somebody else's team, but not yours. Even in super flex leagues here where you're desperate for some quarterback play, 
I'd rather go with the veterans like Aaron Rodgers or Matthew Stafford in that same range easily every single time than over Watson. I know they're older. I don't care. They're more productive or possibly productive at this stage in 2024 than Watson is. So again, I'm going to tie those two guys together. Overall, the Browns are a bit of an enigma to me, and I don't like that when I'm trying to make fantasy draft capital work. And then the last guy that's dead to me is Dallas Goddard. And the reason is Goddard is another guy, too, starting to show some tread on the tires. A guy that feels like at this stage of his career is becoming less of an important cog in this offense. You have A.J. Brown. You have Devonta Smith. And now you've added Saquon Barkley, who's very capable of catching those mid-range targets that usually were sitting there for Dallas Goddard. So for me, I just don't see the path for Dallas Goddard to be a tight end one this year, maybe on the very fringe, but for me, I'm going to be out if I'm looking at deeper leagues and taking shots at tight ends. I'd rather take it on guys like Pat Fryermuth at this stage in his career than a guy like Dallas Goddard. So those guys, Judy, Watson, Goddard, for me this year, just not happening. All right, Joe, keeping with the theme of the segment with the time that we have left, give me a couple of players that are going to be resurrected this season. Ah, guys who are returning. That is a good one. I like that. Um, I think Chris Godwin is one that you would put out there too, a guy that last year people were disappointed in, but moving back into the slot I think is a really good situation for him. So I'd like to bring him back. I think Cooper Cup could be one of those guys too. Cooper Cup definitely has a chip on his shoulder. He's hearing everybody saying, uh, you know, you're always hurt. You know, you can't play anymore. Cooper Cup is one of those dangerous guys when you tell him, no, he can't do it, uh, (laughs) that he's going to go and do it. Like, I just know that. Now, I will say this. When it comes to Cooper Cup, I like him a lot more as a wide receiver three than as a two. So if you have that big wide receiver build and you take Cooper Cup in round three, it's great. But if you take him as your number two, it's a little dicey. I had a great conversation with Dave Richard on my show on Fantasy Pros uh, from CBS about this very subject. And we had a really good breakdown of it. You can see it on YouTube. But I got to say, like, Cup is another one of those guys that, you know, could make big returns in a big way. I don't want to say taking over what Puka Nakua did last year, but kind of reminding everybody why he was so great. So uh, it was great to be back here with you, by the way. I missed you for two weeks. Last weekend, we had the whole weekend off, and look how refreshed and ready we were. Next week, the fallout from the trade deadline on MLB and more fantasy football. That'll do it for us right now, but the story of the game goes on from Adam Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids. despite having the most wins in both the AL and all of Major League Baseball, 52 of them for New York, no longer the best winning percentage. You expect your front offices to hit that gas pedal when it comes time to get a better team on the field post-All-Star break because the one thing that you know from the Yankees and the Orioles is what, Ben? You're going to fight with each other throughout the stretcher and you want home field advantage. The early line, only on SportsGrid. You know, this guy is the mad scientist. I mean, he's all about green density. So you, uh, in my mind, I feel like he, he's going to have the green speeds dialed in and the angles needs to land them and all that sort of stuff. I feel like he's going to be a good spot and playing the course well. And he's going to be hitting less club into a lot of these par threes, too. So I just, you know, we're talking about using a live guy. I, 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 I just, I love Bryson this week. I'm riding with Bryson. Only on Sports Grid. This new sports integrity partnership, Genius Sports, is involved in this, uh, more protection. They said that's going to allow them to beef up their protection and add more integrity monitoring tools uh, to essentially catch bad behavior before it happens. This comes, obviously, after a just ton of scandals we've had across sports betting lately, whether it's the uh, MLB umpire, Pat Hobart. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. Despite me being a Yankee fan, I think uh, Joe would deserve the label as Aaron Judge's biggest fan. Not through any bias, but just through the amount of money that he's uh, made anybody who's been betting on him. I just had him for that home run, and I'm going to go back to it today. That home run coming in at plus 230. Max Freed here, while he has been strong, this is Aaron Judge. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid.